queen of iconic catchphrases, queen of insanity, queen of discovering dead bodies. <laughs> hello, hello, hello! <laughs> Welcome back to another video on my channel. I am so excited to make this video. So, so excited. Today we're going to be doing RuPaul's Drag Race Queens as books recommendations. I am so excited to bring this video. By the way, I've just seen the lighting change. <laughs> the sun is not cooperating with us today. It doesn't want us to succeed. It doesn't want us to succeed, but we're going to. It was all a lie. Guys, it was all a lie. She lied. I mean, just then it's gone in and out, in and out. It's gonna be going in and out a lot. I might try if it changes drastically to adjust the cameras, but anyway, we don't care about that. This is an idea I've had for a long time. RuPaul's Drag Race is pretty much my favorite show. I watch it and I rewatch it. I watch everything to do with it. All the Ru caps, Lee Dawson, all the, you know, what you're packing, everything, everything. I'm obsessed with the show. I'm a basic ass straight white girl, but what can I say? Today I am going to be going through five Drag Race Queens and I'm going to be recommending books to you based on them that I think you'll like if you like that queen. <sighs> I've tried to go for quite an eclectic mix of queens and also um, quite a mix of books. We've got some non-fiction, some fiction, some poetry. We've got it all, sis. We've got it all, just like you want on the show. You want it all. You want all the variety. So that's what we're doing today. Can you tell I'm excited? Evidently. The first queen I'm going to recommend based on is Katya. The Russian whore <laughs> and the Russian whore gets a Russian book. Miss Katya is hilarious but we're not this isn't a funny book so I shouldn't <laughs> I shouldn't say that but when I thought of her she's one of my favorite queens I knew I wanted to recommend based on her I had to recommend a book based on Russia. The easy option would be to just recommend The Baron Light and Girl to you again but we're not going to do that. We're going to recommend Dead Mountain, The Untold Story of the Dilatov Pass Instant by Donny Eicher. Um, I read this based on Books and Lala's recommendation. It's a great piece of nonfiction based on the hikers who died on the Dilatov Pass. I first heard about this incident on BuzzFeed Unsolved. It's an episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved. Maybe I should do a Books as BuzzFeed Unsolved episode. <laughs> That's probably the only other thing I watch as much as Drag Race. Any Shaniacs? <laughs> He made it his personal mission to investigate the incident, talking to people involved. He even has an interview in here with um, a member of the group who, because of illness, had to leave early and thus didn't pass away with the rest of the group. They were all found metres away from their tents, clothes strewn everywhere in different groups around, but not super far from their tent. Um, and so the question is, what made them flee from their tent? He speaks to specialists in the book to come to this conclusion, and to me the conclusion makes a lot of sense. It seems like the best conclusion I've heard, definitely better than what they went into in the BuzzFeed Unsolved episode, but it was early BuzzFeed Unsolved days. So if you're looking to learn more about Russia, because you love Katya so much. <laughs> this is a really interesting piece of Russian history and it's a really, really well-researched book. In some points it reads like um, like a piece of fiction because he takes you through the last steps of the group um, in a really effective way and it's, you know, it's really heartbreaking. There's a lot of pictures of the group in here and they were very young, you know, they had their whole future ahead of them and sadly it all came to an end. So yeah, it's a really interesting piece of Russian fiction, of Russian history. <laughs> that is all of the group. Um, and that one here is the one who we speak to, who had to leave early, but that is the rest of the group who all passed away. This case is just filled with peculiarities <laughs> and, you know, just very strange occurrences that no one can really explain, just like Katya to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, definitely would recommend picking this up. It's a really, really interesting read. Next queen I'm going to recommend based off of is Miss Tammy Brown. Miss... Ah! 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 I'm acting. <laughs> and oh, excuse your mouth. <laughs> queen of iconic catchphrases, queen of insanity, queen of discovering dead bodies. <laughs> Did I ever tell you the time that I found a dead body? I was out riding my bike one afternoon and over in the ditch, I spotted a, a mannequin. I thought it was a mannequin. I thought of all the ways I could dress it up and everything, you know. But by the time I got up close, I realized it was actually a corpse, a dead body. Dead bodies. How's this look, huh? New looks? Ooh. 
I honestly don't understand how she's just not the most iconic queen for everyone. She just like, I'm just obsessed with her and I just, I think it's because I don't understand her. I don't understand her. This in some ways is a bit of a strenuous link and in some ways it's the best recommendation I've got. So Miss Tammy Brown, she must be mad. She must be mad. <laughs> So this is a poetry collection called She Must Be Mad by Charlie Cox, who is a very young English poet. These poems have been written through her teens up until she's in her 20s now, up until now. So in it, she talks about mental health, body image. It's split into four sections, uh, which are she must be in love, she must be mad, she must be fat, she must be an adult, which I'm sure you can imagine already. There's some super powerful poems in here. My favorite one is one about Instagram and I posted Instagram like, Hey everyone, this is what I think of Instagram. Because <laughs> I just felt like it just um, completely described my thoughts and, you know, she's just wonderful with her words. So this is a really amazing, amazing uh, poetry collection. For me, she really explained what it's like living as a young woman in the social media age, especially if you have uh, mental health problems, which, you know, so many of us do. We all have a relationship with our mental health and all the pressures that are put on young women and girls today to live up to um, and how toxic that can be. There was so much in here. I just flew through it. I gave it five stars. It just, it just touched me and it made me think more deeply about a lot of topics. And I really feel like this is a really brilliant way into poetry for a lot of people. I've read very sparse amounts of poetry and never buy a, like a proper, I've never really gone into poetry. I've read it, but not, not loads. So this has really made me want to consume and read more poetry. So I would definitely, definitely recommend picking this up. And remember, we're all a bit mad, but Tammy Brown excels. <laughs> My next recommendation is based off of Aquaria. Oh, sorry to keep you waiting, Adam. Queen of fashion, queen of season 10, queen of the Met Gala. I don't know. Well, she wasn't, it wasn't the best look. Let's be honest. <laughs> we all live in Rihanna's world. <laughs> but my recommendation based on her is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Everyone recommends this book. Everyone says you should read this book. Everyone talks about it on booktube. But girl, this and Aquaria are both classy bitches. Bitches whose aesthetic is thought out, precise, crafted even. You could say that both their images are crafted. They both, to me, they both place so much emphasis on their image and how it makes people think about them. And girl, I just think they're the same. Like, I think Aquaria should play Evelyn Hugo. I think Aquaria could play Evelyn Hugo. I mean, she's not, Aquaria's not the fishiest. But like, I just think she's got that aura. I just think she's got that aura. I mean, the popular choice would be Blair St. Clair because she's got that kind of like old Hollywood vintage. But to me, personality wise, there's more similarities between Miss Evelyn and Aquaria. So if you don't know, this follows old Hollywood film star Evelyn Hugo telling the story of her life to a young budding journalist who has been tasked with writing her autobiography. We learn that she hid a lot throughout her life. There's a lot that the public didn't know and it's now all time for that to come out. For me, this was a real story that stuck with me. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I couldn't stop thinking about the characters, how I wanted to know more about them, how I wanted to be in this world for longer. I can definitely see myself rereading this at some point. The only drawback for me with this book was that I didn't love the character of Monique, the journalist, but I understand why the journalist was there. But part of me just wished, oh, I just take up, sorry. <laughs> Part of me just wished that um, it had just been Evelyn's story, but then it would have had a different dynamic. I appreciate the retelling, but I loved Evelyn's story so much, I wasn't as bothered about the journalist's kind of sub story. But other than that, I mean, this is a really, really brilliant read. Everyone goes on about it, so you know it must be a brilliant read, so you know you need to pick it up if you hadn't. It's a really fast read as well, like you'll fly through it, really character driven. Oh my god, it's just. It's just brilliant. So definitely pick this up if you haven't yet. Now, my next recommendation is based off of probably, quite possibly, well, definitely my boyfriend's favorite queen ever and one of my favorite queens ever. And that is Nina Bonino Brown. Sue me, apart me, fight me. Queen of YouTube. Best, best, best YouTube videos. If you haven't, if you haven't watched Nina Vanina Brown's YouTube videos, what are you doing? Because she's just hilarious. She's just the funniest. So Nina Vanina Brown has spoken out a lot about her mental health, um, both before, after and during the show. Um, and really powerfully, I think. But she definitely struggled a lot on the show and that was a storyline that was 
crafted for her, be it good or bad. I think conversations around mental health are so, so important. So for this, I'm gonna recommend Remember This When You're Sad, Lessons Learned on the Road from Self-Harm to Self-Care by Maggie Van Eyck. So I followed the author on Instagram and Twitter. She has just had a baby and her discussions around mental health and having a baby have been really interesting as well. But in terms of the book, this was before she had a baby. I think the last chapter is about being pregnant. I definitely recommend following her on there as well as reading this. I read this in a day. I read it on the last day of the year last year to get to my goal of 15 books last year, which is crazy that I only read 15 and I had to like rush read this. This is a memoir where the author takes you through her mental health journey and experiences throughout her life. Each chapter focuses on a different topic. So for example, we have remember this when you're scared of your brain, remember this when you can't stand your body, remember this when you're having sex, remember this when someone else hurts you, etc. So it's all about her life experiences and how she's learnt to deal with different situations. For me, I read this at a really difficult time. I just don't think I've spoken about on here yet before, but I, I don't want to say I suffer with, because I don't like that word, but I experience seasonal affective disorder or seasonal depression, whatever you want to call it. So um, I definitely struggle in the winter definitely. And the past winter it wasn't the worst I've ever had, but it wasn't a good one. You know, living away at uni for the first time was really tough. And yeah, it was just, it was just a difficult time. But my mum's, uh, my mum's? <laughs> my boyfriend's mum got this for me and um, it just helped me a lot. It was definitely one of the, one of the stepping stones towards getting myself better this year. I mean, it didn't happen overnight. I saw it a lot of difficult times after I read this book, but it was definitely a piece of the puzzle for me. And if you are struggling, you know, I think reading stuff like this from authors, from individuals who have gone through exactly what you're going through, I think it's really helpful um, to know that we're all not alone and we're all gonna struggle with stuff and I think it just is really something that helps. So sometimes it is good to tear away from the fiction and wanting to escape to another world, because I do that when I'm sad, I want to escape to all these other worlds. But sometimes it's better to ground yourself and to, you know, improve your relationship with yourself and read something like this that will really focus on the relationship you have with yourself. Have I said yourself enough? Probably not. <laughs> and my last recommendation is, okay, this is my favorite drag queen. This is my favorite drag queen. Robbed. <laughs> she was robbed. <laughs> Shangela, 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 the best, 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 the best queen ever, in my opinion. Now, an option, an option, an option could be Game of Thrones, because she made all those Game of Thrones re references, right? I haven't read it, and, you know, we want to go back more into the deep, the core, <laughs> the core of Shangela, <laughs> to uh, get this recommendation. She is the Nancy Drew of drag. She's the Nancy Drew of drag. I am the Nancy Drew of drag. I want to know the real tea. And if I smell a stunt, I'm going to call it out. So what else could I recommend but The Secret of the Old Clock, the Nancy Drew story? <laughs> oh, who's it by? Carolyn? Oh, God. Give me a mo. <laughs> Secret of the Old Clock by Carolyn Keene. Now, I don't own the physical because... I read the audiobook, and for me, that's why I think I gave this five stars. Shocker, I know. You've probably heard people talk about rereading Nancy Drew and going, girl, then then stand up. But I think it does. I loved the audiobook of these. They will not be to everyone's taste, but the audiobooks have music, old time music in it, sound effects, like a cast I think they have. It's a really well done audiobook in my opinion. I like when more effort is put into audiobooks and it's not just someone reading it. It has different kind of elements in it. Um, I think it makes a really big difference and it's probably why I enjoyed it so much because it was more I think a book like this, it needs that. It needs to be more of an experience. I liked that nostalgia, that old timeliness. I've spoken about it before. Nancy Drew games, the PC games, were a massive part of my childhood and I'm replaying them now. I love them so much. They're so good, they're so good. For me, reading and listening to these books, it also has that element where there's something about Nancy Drew, like it's almost like a Harry Potter equivalent for me. I have Harry Potter as well, but it's like another thing like that for me that is just so nostalgic and just makes me feel happy. I don't know, it makes me feel happy, but I think you should really give the audiobooks a try if you haven't, because they're so immersive and so well done and you really feel like you're in like the 1950s or whatever. It was on script. I listened to the first two on script, but they've gone. They've just disappeared for months and I'm 
I'm so heartbroken. I had the first seven, I think, on Scribd and they've all gone. So if you work at Scribd or know someone who works at Scribd, please link me back up. I need to listen to the rest of them because that's I don't want to read them. I want to listen to the audiobook. So Scribd, please put that back on there. The mystery is often quite easy to figure out. Like you're not you're not like on the edge of your seat. This is the most complex mystery I've ever had. I have no idea what's going on. Like you kind of know what's going on. But in my in my opinion, that's kind of the fun of it. They're a nice palette cleanser. If I'm between two heavy books or reading a heavy book, I like to listen to the audiobook alongside it because it's just something easy to listen to. And yeah, I just think they're just fun and old and just like it's just a bit of fun, essentially. So of my five recommendations based on RuPaul's Drag Race Queens, let me know if you enjoyed this. If there's any books that you'd recommend based on other queens, I would love to make this into a series if it's something that you enjoyed because I think there's so many other queens with links to books out there. Please make sure you subscribe and ring the bell if you're enjoying my content as a new creator. <laughs> um, it really helps me out. I'm really appreciative of all the support I've received so far. So yeah, I'm just so thankful. And I'll see you guys soon with another video. Until then, watch some Drag Race or listen to some Nancy Drew. Who knows? Anyway, bye.